in the previous episode. The world's slowest burnout. 1.5? Yeah. 1490, 1480, yeah. What was that? Something has broken. Hey there, fellas. I don't see the point in postponing this any further. I mean to say that we're not quite done with our super powerful Lada, which we need to continue developing. So in the previous episode, we learned that the axle shafts were the weak link, with one of them snapping. And so that has prompted us to use a gazelle truck axle, which is way more robust than what you get on a Lada. It can take much more punishment. So yeah, we install it and carry on experimenting with the gear reduction to increase torque at the wheels. So the plan is to build up the car, and then I guess we're gonna drag around some of the objects that our viewers suggested. Right, let's get this on, lower the car, head out, and continue with the experimentation. So have I got some good news for you fellows. Some cool new merch available on our website. Like for example, these sweet signature hoodies. And the good news doesn't end there. The first 25 people to order these hoodies, we'll be offering them a 25% discount. And don't forget that there's a bunch of other stuff that you can order on our website. T-shirts, baseball caps, mugs, document holders. And we're offering some generous discounts on the entire lineup. And on top of any order you make, we'll throw in one of these stickers on the house. Don't miss your chance to get some merch at discount prices. Hit the link in the video description and grab yourself something. Super powerful Lada capable of doing a wheelie translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Okay, so look here. Everything is going great. We had no trouble installing the gazelle axle. Here everything fits together nicely, so there was no need to make any revisions. The differentials are in the same position they were from the start. And so now, after we've welded everything together and made a few modifications, now is the time for us to do a bit of testing. So we'll carry on with the testing right inside our garage. We decided not to go outside after we destroyed the pavement last time. But here the surface is concrete, we've got the land cruiser in here, we've loaded some gravel, we've got the scale in between them, and hopefully we see a drastic improvement. I'll throw it into first, like I did last time, fire up the engine, and look on. Let's do this. We also need someone to start the cruiser, throw it into neutral and hold the brakes. Now this car easily creeps forward at idle. Let's see what the scale is showing us. Come on now. Oh really? What if we stand on the wheels like this? Did it get smaller or something? Okay, it's starting to slide. It's sliding over the concrete. There it goes. We're only at a thousand kilos and already it's sliding. Isn't that nice? Hopefully we don't take out the lift. And with that we have some results. Alright, so we've gone and degreased everything again. And we've removed the dust from underneath the Toyota's tires, with it losing grip at a ton. Meanwhile, on tarmac, when doing the same thing, the car was staying put at one and a half tons. All of this doesn't really seem right. Alright, let's try that again. And we're off! Seven hundred, eight hundred, nine hundred, one thousand. One thousand and change, and the cruiser loses grip. No, it's still moving. Well, we did up the reading by a hundred kilos, so here's what's up. 
At one ton, it starts dragging the cruiser. We need to bring something else inside and hook it up. We'll load the wagon up some more so we don't have to jump onto it. At least 250 to 300 kilos. That way I think it's gonna be able to tow anything. Alright, let's rock. Alright, so we've hooked up a Prado. And so now on top of the 100 series Land Cruiser, we now also have a Land Cruiser Prado attached. Which are up against our Lotta Wagon. We've loaded another 250 kilos of gravel into the trunk, for a total of 850 kilograms. Now we throw it into first. And we're ready. You guys ready? To lose? If the wheels do start to spin, we'll climb onto it and help push the tires down to increase the traction. With this sort of reduction, the car is going to be pretty much unstoppable. Okay, let her rip. Now let's have a look. And see where this goes. So far, so good. Fantastic. Not enough. Okay, the 100 series has lost traction. Don't, man, something might fly off inside the cabin. That's 1.5 tons. And I am noticing that the 100 series is creeping. What about the Prado? Say what? Nah, it's towing both of them. That's it, even the Prado is sliding. How much is that? 1.5? Stupid round bumper. Look at that. Not bad. Why'd we stop? Oh, we've reached the spot that... We are slowly moving, eh? Right, so we were easily able to tow a couple of cars, however... You see, the car was running at idle. The engine was turning at idle, nobody was pressing the gas, and the car was in first. The engine was under no stress, and we even saw wheel spin with this much reduction. I'm keen to see whether we can even give it a hard time. See how much of a toll it takes on the motor. Find out how much it really takes for it to get the whole assembly to spin. And so instead of first, why don't we use third? Will the engine be stressed out or not? Let's try this. There we are. Third gear. Are we ready? Off we go. Okay, and now something's whining. That's third. It's still pulling with one and a half tons of force, but it seems to be overworked now. It's cutting into my hand. See that? The three of us were lifting it up. You want to try fourth? Okay, it's worth a try. And now we are in fourth. Look at what it's doing in fourth. See that? They're spinning faster. And we're exerting more force. Here's where we need to be. Oh, it's slippery. It's going strong after the cleanup. Oh, 
You realize that we would have never lifted the front end of a lot in normal conditions, but here, since it is trying to lift the front end itself, we were almost able to. It's sliding again. Oh, there we go. 700, the rubber is starting to get warm. Oh, yeah? I'm seeing 1600. That's pretty good. Oh, my goodness. Now screw this, we need to bring it back down. We need more grip. That's for sure. Those are serious results. That's plenty of pull at idle. And the engine can surely drag much more. We need to find more grip. Now we do know a few local drag racers, so I called them. And they immediately agreed to help us out, so I paid them a visit. <laughs> and they gave me a couple of these. Here we've got one of the tires they gave us. So that's one. It's 32 inches in diameter, with a width of 21.5 inches. Or a 15 inch rim. Now those gazelle rims... Those were 16s, but no worries. So previously we were running a dually setup with two wheels of this width, right? Without even measuring it, you can tell that this tire is considerably wider. On top of that, it was designed to provide a lot of grip and get up to some high speeds. And as such, the rubber is very soft, it's got a very grippy compound, it should grip the surface very well. Our main problem now is where to find the appropriate wheel. We'll have to find some 15s to weld up a set of split rims to fit the width of the tire. The gazelle bolt pattern is gonna pose a problem, of course. But we have found a solution. So we've already cut out the center bits from the gazelle 16s. Now we chop some 15s, weld in some metal, cut out the center pieces from those, and replace them with these. The end goal is to be able to mount up these monstrous tires. Now, you would have noticed that these tires are studded. You see, those friends of ours attended the Baikal Mile in the winter, where they raced on ice. So aside from everything else, we'll also be removing all of these studs. Some of our mechanics might go insane, but hopefully we endure. God help us. Okay, fellas, we've made it out to a paved lot. Things are going great. We'll kick this off with the 100 series again. We tried back at our facility on concrete. We swept the floor, degreased the tires. Here we didn't do any sort of prep, but even so, I expect there to be plenty of grip. So we're hooking up the 100 series again to measure the force in kilograms, in terms of how much pull it can generate, and see if the wagon is able to pull the Land Cruiser. Okay, let's fire up the engine. Round one. Okay, we good. Sitting at idle. Five hundred. Seven hundred. Nine hundred. One ton. A hundred. Two hundred. Three hundred. Four hundred. 500. 600 and the cruiser has found some grip. Let go of the brakes. What was that? What was that? What's with the axle? 
It's trying to escape. Really? You serious? Holy cow. Yeah, let go. Alright, so on our first attempt, we easily got up to 1900 kilos. But then the axle began to act up. Apparently the 100 series has a good grip on things with the tarmac being so hot. The wagon was barely able to move it. We've tied the rope a bit differently and now we see what's up. The axle is trying to separate from the Lada. They don't want to be friends. Round 2. And it's off. There we go. It's moving. Two hundred kilos. Three hundred. Four hundred. Half a ton. Okay. Yeah, we are making progress. We're already at a ton. And now that's 1.5. 600, 700, 800, 900. I think we're close to tearing out the axle. Come on, that's almost two tons. Just a bit more left, 10 kilos, 6 kilos. And that's two tons. We got the rope secured slightly off-center, and the car is starting to rotate. And the wheels are spinning. But that is a solid two tons. Is the axle still in place? Two tons. That's quite... nice. We have achieved some interesting results, but we'll still go ahead and proceed to... I don't know, cheat, I guess? The point is that we've tied the rope differently, see? Instead of the axle, we've tied it to the body. Let's see how this goes. Round three. Alright, let's do this. There we are! Look at it go! Sergey! Can you let it go for just a bit? There we are! This is going well! No, keep holding it! Hold it! Come on! Yeah, just a bit. Now here's what's curious. Do you hear how the engine is running? It's sitting at idle. Can anybody out there try and do a wheelie at idle? We were able to with no trouble at all. It's starting to lose grip. You can see that the bumper is touching the ground. Well, it's not necessarily the bumper. More like the rear fenders, but in any case, that creates a bit of lift. The tires lose grip and start to spin, and there you go. We did see this coming, so no surprise. Oh, cool. It's holding up. The roof is keeping it together. We should open the door and see whether the body is twisted. Oh, I have no idea. They didn't open this good even when the car was new!
This went quite well, I'd say. The ladder was able to pull off a wheelie. It's still in that position, as you can see. We're good here, and the whole thing held up, though the axle was making an awful crunching noise while trying to detach from the car. One of the uni joints has crumbled to bits. The bearing case pretty much shot out of there. It all looks pretty sketchy, and the car can fall down at any moment. Looks like it was under enormous stress. In any case, the car was easily able to generate two tons of force. 60 horsepower and two tons of pulling force, I mean, holy cow! Amazing! And let me remind you that throughout the course of this entire experiment, the engine was running at idle. That does it for this wonderful experiment, fellows. So while we were in the process, an idea occurred to us. Now, if this video gets 100,000 likes, here's what we're gonna do. We'll lift the car into the air, I mean by the rear end, and high enough for it to no longer be touching the ground. Then we fix the rear axle in place somehow, fire up the engine and let the car spin. Now, that should be pretty interesting. Anyway, so that's how we easily got a lot of to do a wheelie. And that's all I got for you. Watch us, subscribe. We've got these sweet hoodies, links in the description. Suggestions, comments, give us a big thumbs up. All right, catch you later. That went okay.